Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the point. All the back of some um, Shogun 2 Follow Samurai's Crumble to Far East, and we're playing as Ching. Uh, should be no surprise because of the title. Uh, but anyway, um, in the last turn, we um, are deciding who the heck should we invade. And I finally said, you know what? We're gonna invade the United States because one, the United States is way too powerful at this point, getting a lot of problems, especially with their ally Prussia, which I don't know how many provinces they have. But from what I do know, um, they've pretty much taken the Northern Alliance out. Um, the, um, to make the situation even worse, the British are currently at war with the United States and they're losing, so that makes my only expansion of one helping the British, which is, uh, like, I need to help the British at this point, or else, um, I'm, the United States are gonna be at my doorstep. It's either I help the United States, I'm uh, sorry, I help the UK, and, uh, literally risk the p potential ability in that, um, the British are gonna take some land for themselves, or I literally wait for the British to literally get themselves killed, and which they will, and uh, we've seen it happen. Uh, get themselves killed, and literally, um, I have to fight from all the way from where I am to um, into American, into British, former British territory, into American territory, and then uh, on the, the deal with Prussia and whatnot. Um, that's gonna be hard, uh, to say the least. But um, yeah, that's gonna be a problem. Um, what, right now it's still even a problem because the British just lost Setsu, which is their capital. Um, they lost Setsu. Uh, the United States are just uh, pumping out armies like heck. The British have a lot of armies, but they're just not facing the United States for some reason. Um, from what I know, of course, um, the British have a lot of armies. They're, they're just not they're they're just not facing the United States. As you can see, one stack army right there, one stack army in the ocean, and literally the, you have American troops just running around left, right, and center, and I don't know what the heck they're doing. So that's a pain. Um, our fleet is being raised. Uh, so um, once again, for those who are wondering, yes, I'm gonna call my fleet the Bayang fleet. And literally, it's because um, why not? Let's do something historical. Um, my fleet is the the fleet is being raised, which means I will actually get some modern ships. Um, once again, as you can see, a lot of province problems. But uh, once again, province problems are not a problem. <laughs> um, to a certain degree, I wish they changed that. But a certain to also a certain degree, I think I think you shouldn't really change that in the sense that there's no really big point like. Um, yeah, it's, it's up for you guys to describe, but would you guys want to see a change on province management? Because, prefer, preferably, I really like to fight, obviously, but then that, 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 that's, that's me. Like, I literally, I, I'm the, I'm the general and I'm not, the, like, the province management. Unless for some campaigns, but then you have to. But, um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, like, the, I'm really the general type person. Like, I like to fight massive battles and stuff and whatnot. I don't really like to manage my provinces a lot. Obviously, I do. I do know how to manage my provinces because, um, well, actually, no. To a certain degree, I don't, but a certain degree, I do. Uh, it's, it's 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 for you guys to decide, of course. But yes, um, um, uh, okay. Um, our fleet is getting ready to board a ship, and then we'll be heading for Japan. Two armies boarding Japan. I have a lot of garrison troops in Korea. Oh. Which I literally need to get rid of to a certain degree. Um, yes. Um, not really much I can do about that. Like a lot of provinces are unhappy, but um, I've ended Korea, so that's a good thing. Um, don't know what to really do at that point. But, uh, just a lot of province management. Um, I do have a geisha right here, but she's pretty much just inspiring the troops, and that's it. Um, yeah. Um, I come to find out these western ships are very fast, which is great. So, yeah, we can move, uh, people a lot, a lot faster. So that's, that's great. And that's that. Anyway, that said, we are going to be moving closer to um, former British territory in the sense that we are moving closer to the Americans. We technically only have two turns until we de can declare war. That means um, after two turns, we can officially declare war on them without suffering a di diplomatic penalty, which is something I want to keep. Um, really want to get that diplomatic penalty to a zero because, well, actually, I, I, 
Okay, when I declare war on Korea, I did have a diplomatic penalty, but um, as of right now, I don't really think I have a diplomatic penalty. Or by now, it should be gone. Although, um, in some provinces, I have been seeing that um, in the past, I had a diplomatic penalty, so they were like, yeah, you, I can't trust you. Which, I, I don't blame them. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, United Kingdom, um, essentially, entered a trade agreement, which I literally have to pay them now to give back the trade agreement, so that's gonna be a pain. We can't accept the offer, but yeah, yada yada yada. Um, you want me to declare war on some little faction, or the or on and eventually on the United States? Um, yeah. Um, remember how I said that in in Shogun 2, um, well in this mod? Uh, so do I want to forbid weapons? Yes, I think I should. Um, we're eventually gonna get that 15% trade boost and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> but remember how I said about um. Um, about province management and people not literally being happy. Well, the only province that seems to rebel be rebellion all in during the entire time is literally Setsu. And, uh, Setsu is one of those... I don't know why, but, um, there is a rebel army in Setsu as we speak. Um, well, you can't see it right now because we're trying to move to the border. And, um, as of right now, um, the British are going to be supporting us. But, um, yes, uh, they've taken out... Well, actually, no, they have still haven't taken out... But uh, finally, we're gonna get on some western ships, and we're gonna get the heck out of here. Um, we're gonna be moving to, um, essentially, Wakasa Waka Bay, and then we're just gonna disembark our troops. Hopefully, um, the United States don't have a port, but uh, if in the case that they do have port batteries, and what I mean by a port, um, it's basically naval guns. Um, they have shore-mounted batteries, so like um, port guns, so that's gonna be a pain deal with but uh, hopefully we'll if the United States does have has naval guns then we have to get around them if um, if we can't get around them then we have to land at a recently held British area and uh, pray for the best uh, currently uh, the British want me to declare war on the United States I'm like nope because I um, j just have to wait for next turn and after the next turn is free game uh, the Dutch have a lot of armies just two at least they have at least two stacks and um if every time I see a two stack, I have to quadruple that, or even sometimes double that, um, just to make sure. Well, to quadruple, sometimes double, and other times quadruple, just to just give me the impression of how many troops the enemy has. Um, we are building a lot of ships, so that's wonderful. That's great, actually. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, this new ship is going to be coming in the uh, next turn. Um, remember how I said about western ships, uh, traditional ships being extremely slow? Yeah, the, this traditional ship is not slow, it's extremely slow compared to um, that. Um, I kind of forgot to move my agents, but um, one ship you can deploy to put two agents on, so that's nice. Um, elsewhere, um, this fleet is setting sail to Wakasa Bay. And hopefully we can disembark our troops on to the United States, which I hope we can. Um, the British also hold Tango, so that's great. Uh, and once again, every time I say Tango, um, guys, it's not Africa Tango, it's, I guess, Japan Tango. Or I, or either that, it's either the same name or I'm just getting it totally wrong. Um, I will be offering the British to declare war on the United States. They, I, I'm giving them a trade agreement, and they're like, nope. So I have to pay them a little. And, um, there goes our economy. <laughs> um, technically, I could have backstabbed the British, um, but, uh, why, uh, why not? Uh, I do have to help the British. Um, not that I have a big choice, but, um, yes. We run into this literally American army, and it's uh, not a, not a, not a bit terrible army. Uh, so we're gonna assault it. And, yes, hope for the best. Um, during the battle, <laughs> uh, what happened was that the battle replay got so corrupted that literally, um, it was basically useless, um, which is what you see right here. I am literally trying. I'm fighting the battle on the battlefield. That should be like no. That should be like duh. But uh, I usually I usually show you guys the battle replay. Um, and that's because today uh, the battle replay got so corrupt. Basically, in the battle replay, what you see is basically the fact that um, in the battle replay, you basically see me scaling the first one and everyone dies. Literally, it's that bad. And in, in actuality, it didn't really happen, so yeah. Um, um, for those that are wondering, yeah, this is how you use rockets. You fire a volley and then you stop because the rockets will somehow fire twice. 
And yes, uh, what I've been talking about is about fire damage, and then you can see fi fires have been started. And um, yeah, um, I have five teams of mortars, which means I can literally destroy every every um, every tower in one shot, one, one volley to be exact. And um, yes, um, yep. Uh, tower destroyed. That's great. Um, we're gonna fire on the next one. And uh, yes, we're trying to also burn the gate, and it's not going too well. I have to admit. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least the big gate is burning. So then, yeah, we're gonna move through. Um, as you can see, the basically the tower, the inner towers have been burnt. And um, technically, I'm just trying to search what I can fire upon because, like, all the technically all the towers in the way have either been taken out or are in the process of being taken out, as you can see with this one. Just one more shot, which means, um, yeah, that's that's a problem. Well, that's not really a problem, but uh, yeah. Um, um, I could have possibly taken this air tower, but I decided to just destroy this air tower. Get the heck, get the air tower out of existence. Um, I have to capture another arrow tower, which is um, good in the sense that this arrow tower is not facing us, so um, that's great. Um, it's facing the other way, which is a problem. Um, okay, yeah, it's not a time to use ammunition, at least not too much ammunition. There is an ammunition count, I just I just um, want to be making sure that um, um, we don't use that many ammunition, because we're going to eventually use it later on. In uh, scaling the siege, and you can see rockets are very good at taking out enemy artillery. Um, we just literally destroyed um, essentially what, like two batteries. Well, not complete batteries, of course. Now I'm just sending in my uh, my mob to go in. Well, technically, elite mob. Um, um, in warfare, there's a lot of scary things. The biggest scary thing is is uh, elite elite enemy units. And the even more scarier thing is that um, there's a lot of elite enemy units. Um, however, the even the most scariest thing I will dare say is that um, is that you have a very good general, and that is probably the most scariest thing. Like, um, yeah, our mortars are raining heck on the enemy, and after a volley, I decide to stop because all we need is a volley. And yes, um, you can see my spearmen on the right taking some damage. It says they're taking damage, but they're actually not during this entire time. They um they went from 240 down to um yeah. So yes. Um at this point I'm just going to decide to fast forward because why not? Um um a lot of boring stuff like taking the gate, stuff like that. Um The United States is sending out a unit to come out, and it's a levy unit, which means I can technically just bombard the heck out of it. Uh, although I don't really want to bombard it right now because um, I I really want to destroy it in the sense that um, well, it's gonna take the gate, and I don't really want to actually know the gate is destroyed. But I, at first, I don't know what the unit is running around. It looks like it looks to seem that this unit is running to nowhere, and uh, they're gonna take this sector of the wall so I'm gonna bombard that sector spe specifically that's that that sector of the wall so I'm just gonna be fire on them and um, pray for the best essentially for them um they're gonna be hitting my second line of units but that's not gonna really matter because um, this entire wall is destroyed and most of them are dead <laughs> um, that was quick um, yeah So at this point, nothing really much is happening, except for our guys scaling the walls. Um, we're gonna move our main body of our units in. Um, these guys are still firing, and by the way, um, for those now wondering why can't I hear the sound, it's because there is no sound. Um, sorry guys. Um, the sound. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, the, I didn't put the, I didn't put in the sound when I was recording because. Usually I don't really have sound when I record um, the campaign because the campaign is just like uninteresting. But when um, when it comes to the battle replay, I would almost always have sound on, and and because um, this time we're not using the battle replay, we don't have sound, so that's going to be a problem. Um, also, uh, for this mod, I really find replays are corrupted. So yeah, um, at least not ba uh, battlefield replays. I mean, and what I mean by that is literally um, battle replays. Um, those are not corrupted, not ever, for some reason. Um, 
Yes. We're gonna fast forward because this is the most boring part again. Just uh, killing this unit. Um, and yes, the enemy has two generals, so that's a good sign. Um, the enemy general is literally um, who I call Matthew P Perry, or um, Matthew, literally. And the other dude is literally or some random general, so uh, we should be good on that side. Um, yeah, we can, yeah, th that is the some random general, and the other random, well, the, uh, the, the, the general who I call Matthew Perry is literally up there somewhere. Um, he's actually with that. Yeah, you, you guys can see that star, that's where he is. But, um, I'm gonna scale the sector. I'm gonna take the sector, and, um, yeah. I, um, don't know what I'm gonna do. I can technically go in. I'm trying to figure out how should I attack this. Um, the enemy has no one facing the wall this way, and at this point, I'm just trying to set fire on everything I can, physically can, of course. Um, as you can see, no fires are started on the first volley, which is fine. Uh, usually, the second volley does the trick. But yes, um, well that, that that also depends on literally how many guns you have when, when you're firing. Um, usually two two volleys by one single gun is uh, more than enough. Um, this general for a second uh, just stands there and starts shooting my men because he is a mounted uh, gun general. So uh, we're just going to charge later at the enemy general. And you can literally see the enemy gen general in the center, so yeah, that's going to be a problem. Um, the fire has still not been started, so that's a problem. Um, uh, yeah, actually, actually, no, it's, it's just been started, so that's great. Um, um, I'm gonna stop, have them stop firing, and our men are gonna be, uh, trying our best to kill the general. On the others, well, we are clumping up, which is a bad thing, but, uh, then, that said again, um, nothing I can really do about it. It's going to go to 80, 91, 95, 98, and 100, and everyone dies. <laughs> Um, there, oh, th that was a marine unit, great, um, and here's what I'm talking about rockets, every time I tell them to stop firing, they, they will fire an extra round, just, just to make sure the enemy's dead, or something like that, but uh, I don't know why they will do such a thing, um, yeah, um, don't know what to really do, okay, you see me make a somewhat a mistake right here, um, I thought the cavalry, my cavalry, my cavalry was gonna go through this way, uh, it, and it ended up going around the map, literally around the map, and literally going in through a arrow tower, and that, that is why you literally have to micromanage people, um, you literally have to make sure that nothing, um, Yeah. So yeah, that's a problem. But anyway, uh, eventually the rest of the battle is just me taking it out, and then uh, the rest, the rest of the battle is just me, the cavalry taking it out, and then everything was fine after that. But um, nothing really much happened after that. I am gonna raise this um, dude, and I'm gonna pray for the best, and that he trades my troops. But eventually, you can see that that guy did absolutely nothing. But yes. We're gonna get mounting a lot of uprest. So yeah, so we're gonna have our fleet go on to this other fleet, 
But um, we're gonna, because our traditional ship is so slow, I'm gonna have my traditional ship get out and literally scuttle itself because, <laughs> yeah, there's not really a point of getting these guys and we're gonna keep moving uh, the fleet with this unit. So yes, um, yeah. As you can see right here, we can technically, we can technically land, so that's a wonderful sight. Um, usually the enemy has a lot of arrow tower, well, can batteries and stuff that, like that and whatnot, so that's gonna be a pain. But, um, it's not that bad today for some reason. Oh, well, actually no, it's not that bad at this place, for some reason. Um, the encyclopedia is not there. So yeah, um, yeah, that's that. Um, not really what to sure what to do because we've taken, we've taken, uh, we've taken, we've taken the castle Setsu. We've retaken Setsu for the British wall, although we're keeping it for this time. But we, we, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, in the sense that, um, do I hold it? I, well, do I keep advancing? I technically can, but uh, my army is in pretty bad shape. Um, yeah, the American defenders did a pretty good job at uh, decimating my army, but um, they didn't destroy my army, which is great. Um, so that is kind of going to foreshadow um, how the rest of the war is going to be. We're going to take essentially extremely heavy casualties, but uh, at least for this army. The Army of the North, which is um, landing, just landed by sea, it's a little bit different, as you can see why. But, um, yeah. But, um, everything else is pretty problematic. British are going to be moving some units, the United States are going to be moving some units, and uh, there's nothing else much I can do. Um, the United States, um, all the Dutch, um, going through, yeah. Um, not, okay, um, Daisu Sumotsu want a peace treaty to, uh, they're, they're, um, yeah, I'm going to accept that because, uh, one, I have a lot of money, and two, uh, I don't know what they have left. Uh, I think they have a massive island, well, half of an island, so I actually want to have peace. Although, technically, um, after I finish the war with the United States, I'm gonna pretty much end this, uh, that faction. Oh, who else? What else, actually? Uh, not really much, not, nothing much going on, and, um, yeah. As you can see, a lot of stuff is just meeting, going around. And making sure that uh, nothing rule um, goes bad, essentially. And uh, yes, um, a lot of province management here and there. So yes, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. A lot of boring stuff, I, if you want me to admit it, um, like literally. Yeah. Um, we're going to do some naval bombardment. Um, we're going to get our troops on to the beaches and literally start fighting the Americans. Um, they do have this army right here. I'm not afraid of it at all. Um, um yes, we're just going to fight them on the battlefield. And, um... Pray for the best, essentially.
Um, their riddle, their, yeah, they have, like, I had twice their numbers, essentially. Um, however, to my horror and shock, um, the, 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 it was flat terrain. Literally, it was flat terrain. So I literally, um, didn't know what to do. Um, I eventually just move up, slowly and slowly, like how I will do in a siege battle. Um, but, uh, before that, I'm just trying to have my artillery pound the heck out of them. But, um, speaking of my army that I brought... I brought a lot of white banner border units, um, and uh, there's nothing much I can really do about that. Uh, a lot of white banner border units, and yep, um, yeah, this entire line is like white banner border units, and I can tell, once again, I can tell it's a white banner border unit because it literally has a red border on its armor. So that's the reason, that's the way and in which I, how I would tell. It literally um, is a white banner border unit. Um, yes, that's that. Um, our rockets are will be firing as of right now, and you can just see the the effect. Um, Yeah. Um. Um, as you can see, the United States Army is mostly made up of. Uh, one second. State foot, uh, colonial foot, and um, state regulars. Um, colonial foot is on the. is the one with the white and blue pants. The state foot is the one with the gray uniforms. Um, and yeah. Um, they're disappearing. They're 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 for the rest of the battle. The units are going to be disappearing, disappearing in and out, and the reason because is that they're in a forest. And um, yeah, um, I'm just going to eventually fire all my um, guns at this artillery piece. Um, I literally just take down two in the first volley, which is pretty dang good. But um, yeah, um. Yeah, you can see some more troops. They have colonial, they have conscripts. Oh, I, I think the Americans are volunteers, but um, some volunteers, colonial infantry, state foot. Um, their artillery is firing, but they're not doing a lot of damage. Um, yeah, and um, if I my memory serves correct, they have well, just a lot of. They have one unit of. Uh, regular infantry, which is for the Americans like a state infantry. Um, yeah, I think that's that's um, that's how it is. But uh, eventually, our guys are gonna move up, and uh, the second we move across this hill, which the enemy did a terrible job, my uh, the, my opponent, which was literally no one, uh, the AI, literally decides to like um, literally decides to hold behind this hill. And literally what I'm going to do is just go up to them, uh, walk all the way, literally, I, except for this small distance. I, I finally, I ran and then I bas basically just gave them the cold steel. And essentially what happened was that they just got routed. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, these colonial infantry are going to suck terribly in melee, although they are getting some kills, I do have to admit. Um, the units on the right, which are some... Um, more colonial infantry and uh, some uh, some other units, whatnot, uh, that are just getting charged in. They are firing, but um, it's too late, too little, too late. And uh, we're just gonna be essentially massacring them. Um, they are getting some kills left and right, but um, our guys are better, better trained and better equipped. Although it does seem uh, at this point of stage of time that um, they are getting a lot more kills. Eventually, all the kills that I do add up. And uh, at this point, I I still have not only my are my troops better, but um. I have literally twice the numbers, so um, yeah. Uh, eventually, as you can see, uh, the sum of the colonial infantry and co uh, volunteers route, and that's just gonna give me a chance to essentially surround and surround them. Also, during this entire battle, I was just uh, because I had so many numbers, I was surrounding him, and so yeah. So yeah. Um, at this point, you can see the Americans are starting to really have morale issues, and they're starting to route. Um, I'm just gonna continue to chase them, and at this point, the entire American army just routes, and that's when the real killing begins. Um, just saying. Um, the, the 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 problem is that I didn't have cavalry. Uh, I didn't have enough cavalry in this battle. 
and uh, it didn't it doesn't go too well. Um, for well, it went very well for me during the battle, but I, I didn't really chase the enemy. Um, so yeah, um, didn't really chase them. Didn't really. Um, if I had my cavalry, I'd be chasing them. I won't. I won't give. Them, I won't be giving them time to regroup and stuff like that. But um, uh, here's what I have. The first battle, the first two battles, a glorious victory. Um, although one could be definitely stated as a pure victory. Uh, we won without <laughs> relatively high casualties. Uh, 503, so that's pretty dang impressive. Um, yeah, some of my most kills have been got by my uh, white border units. Although some white border units, which I kept in reserve, haven't done a lot. Uh, we've won in this sector, and at this point, um, we can't really auto resolve, so that's a problem because auto resolve sucks for us. Definitely, auto resolve sucks uh, for Shogun. Well, for this mod in, in general, unless you're using traditional, well, actually no, unless you're using um, westernized units, auto resolve sucks. But anyway, that is pretty much it for this episode. Um, have a great day, and I'll see you next one. Bye.